I'd like to welcome you to the United Church this morning. I'm Lynn McCann, and I'm filling in for Mary, Reverend Mary, who's away this week. It's been uh, really wonderful to see more and more people coming into the church these last couple of Sundays since the church has been opened up again. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more and more of you as the weeks go by. It's so good to be together in person finally. For thousands of years, First Nations have walked on this land. As we gather, we acknowledge that we stand on the traditional territory of the Klahaman Nation. Let us live together in respect, peace, and friendship on this land. And I don't know about you, but I've got some good news. And that's this morning for the first time in six months, the clock in my van is right. And I'm really happy about that. And it's going to be right for six months and then it's going to be wrong again. But now it's right. We'll start this morning with a prayer written by Catherine Tubble from London, Ontario. Loving God, sometimes we enter special seasons like Lent thinking we need to give up something. Empower us to empty ourselves of all that holds us back trusting that you will fill us with what we need, need. In the name of Jesus, who showed us the path of emptying ourselves and letting go. Amen. Now this is the second Sunday of Lent, and this year as I was pondering about this season, I came across something that my friend Kathy posted on Facebook. It was written by Pope Francis, entitled, Do You Want to Fast This Lent? He wrote, fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints contemplate simplicity fast from pressure and be prayerful fast from bitterness fill your hearts with joy fast from selfishness and be compassionate fast from grudges and be reconciled fast from words be silent and listen You know, we'll have children's time, and it was really so nice last Sunday to see Hattie Mae and Hazel and Addison and Brianna in the church. And I've brought a, uh, Amanda's old rhyme Bible to read a story for the children this morning. And this is from Mark 10. As children come to Jesus, and this is a rhyming Bible. So some boys and girls went out to play, but then they saw Jesus coming their way. Let's go see him, the children said, and all the mothers nodded their head. But Jesus' disciple said with a frown, just look at the children in this town. We can't allow those boys and girls. They'll make entirely too much noise.
So when the children came and said, we'd like to see Jesus, they shook their heads. Can't you see? He's busy teaching. Don't interrupt when Jesus is preaching. The children sadly turned away, but Jesus called for them to stay. He scolded the men, now let them be. I want the children to come to me. The children crowded all around and sat beside him on the ground. They laughed and had a lot of fun as Jesus blessed them one by one. And our hymn will be from Voices United, number 365, Jesus Loves Me. I would like to thank you for your continued support of our church so that we may be a blessing for others. Dear God, we are able to bless others because you first blessed us. We know that our blessings are not limited by what we put in the collection plate, but also by the talents that you gave each of us. Bless then what we offer to you and how we give of ourselves in various ways so that your love may be shared with others. Amen. And our hymn will be Voices United, number 600, When I Needed a Neighbor. Were you there? Were you there when I needed 
the shelter were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name, what matter were you there? When I needed a hero, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a hero, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name, what matter were you there? We have a wonderful um, resource book. It's called The Gathering. And I'm going to share what was written by the editor, Susan Nuclei, about prayers of the people. I believe that prayers of the people are the main reason why we gather to worship. Another re word for worship is liturgy, which comes from Greek and means public working. When we worship, we are there to work to do a public working or a public service. The public service we are called to do in worship is to pray for others. For me, all our worship service leads up to the prayers of the people. We gather, we confess, we sing, we receive the words of scripture, all to prepare us so that we may do public work of praying for others. The prayers of the people are a time for us to get to work as followers of Jesus doing our public service of praying for others and for the world. All of us are in need of God's grace and compassion. All of us need the Spirit's presence to uphold and encourage us. While our work is to pray for people, we too might be struggling in some way, me and the person beside me in worship. We are not praying for others somewhere out there. We are praying for each other and for ourselves. The offering of the prayers of the people is important work. For me, it's the major act of worship, our public service that then unfolds into the service we offer each day in the world as followers of Jesus. And as we have our prayers, I'd like us to remember and pray for the people around the world who are suffering from war, floods, freezing storms, fires, our friends and neighbors who are dealing with medical crises or the loss of loved ones. I'd also like you to remember Brenda and her family as they're suffering the loss of their husband and father, Wayne. It's especially poignant for her family because Wayne's brother passed away only three months ago, so her family is suffering dreadfully right now and they really appreciate your support. We also celebrate with those who are welcoming new members into their family through marriage and babies. Some of us have much to celebrate and some of us have great need of comfort. And thank God that we are here for each other. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. This morning's scriptures uh, are from Psalms and Luke. It would be Psalm 27. This one seems pretty appropriate for what's going on in the world right now. And it was entitled A Prayer of Praise. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. 
The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. When evil men attack me and try to kill me, they stumble and fall. Even if a whole army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. Even if enemies attack me, I will still trust God. I have asked the Lord for one thing. One thing only do I want. To live in the Lord's house all my life. To marvel there at his goodness and to ask for his guidance. In times of trouble, he will shelter me. He will keep me safe in his temple and make me secure on a high rock. So I will tri triumph over my enemies around me with shouts of joy. I will offer sacrifices in his temple. I will sing. I will praise the Lord. Hear me, Lord, when I call to you. Be merciful and answer me. When you said, come worship me, I answered, I will come, Lord. Don't hide yourself from me. Don't be angry with me. Don't turn your servant away. You have been my help. Don't leave me, don't abandon me. O oh God, my Savior, my father and mother may abandon me, but the Lord will take care of me. Teach me, Lord, what you want me to do, and lead me along a safe path because I have many enemies. Don't abandon me to my enemies who attack me with lies and threats. I know what I will live to see the Lord's goodness in this present life. Trust in the Lord. Have faith, do not despair, trust in the Lord. And the second reading is from Luke chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. And this is when Jesus was doing teaching throughout the land. At that same time came some Pharisees to Jesus and said to him, You must get out of here and go somewhere else, because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus answered them, Go and tell that fox, I'm driving out demons and performing cures today, and tomorrow and on the third day I shall finish my work. Yet I must be on my way today, tomorrow and the next day. It is not right for a prophet to be killed anywhere except in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets, you stone the messengers God has sent you. How many times I wanted to put my arms around all your people, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you would not let me, and so your temple will be abandoned. I assure you that you will not see me until the time comes when you say, God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. And I've titled the message today, Called to Action. <clears throat> in our scriptures for today, we heard in Luke 13 that Jesus cries over Jerusalem as a hen over her chicks. I think Jesus is crying now. I have never been touched by war, never feared that my home would be blown up by missiles never faced anyone pointing a gun or an armored tank at me, never had to flee for my life. I don't know what that feels like. I watch the news and my heart breaks for the people I see who are picking through the rubble of, was once, was, of what was once their home. I see people hiding in shelters underground as bombs destroy their city. I see people running away with their children and only one suitcase, trying to find a safe place of refuge in a foreign country. I see parents who have to answer their children's questions when they ask, why did somebody blow up our house? Or why do they want to shoot me? This is not new. Scenes like this have been going on since time began. The only difference is the types of weapons available at the various times in history. I sometimes wonder if God ever regrets creating us. We were meant to live in loving companionship with our God and our neighbors, 
not to fight with one another. One day, there will be worldwide peace. None of us knows when this will be, but the Bible does tell us that this will be so. Our world is full of amazing array of plants. Like the human race, they come in all shapes and sizes. Some are flowers and some are weeds. Some are strong and some are delicate. Some plants are gorgeous and others plain. Some plants take 25 years before producing a single flower, while others are like a flash in a pan, popping up out of the ground and producing a lovely bloom one day and fading away to nothing the next. Some plants are poisonous, but those who are poisonous often have an antidote growing nearby. Throughout history, like the plants, there have been poisonous human villains, people who crave power and glory, people who have a deep need to subjugate others in order to raise themselves up. These egomaniacal people consider themselves above the law and above decency. They do anything to gain power. They lie, manipulate, kill, bring war against anyone who stands in their way or against anyone or any country that has the resources they covet. These people have ice water in their veins, capable of committing any atrocity to reap the results they want. These people, people are bullies on a colossal scale. Like the anecdotal plants in the forest and often overlooked until they are needed, there are people born to face down evildoers. Often these people have not been trained for their place in history. Some have led quite ordinary lives until they step up to provide leadership in times of dire need. Think of Moses, think of David, one was raised and privileged and was well-educated, and one was not. They both stepped up, against, stepped up against the evil of their time. We know their stories. In more recent history, there arose Churchill, a man born for his time, a man able to inspire his country and their allies to defeat the evil that was Hitler. And again, repeating from Luke 13, Jesus cries over Jerusalem as a hen over her chicks. Where in the world might Jesus be weeping today over the destruction in the world? The world now has Putin. He too, like all the other evil leaders throughout history, wants what is not his. He wants the Ukraine. The man who won the last election to lead the Ukrainian government was a most unlikely choice. President Zelensky was not trained or educated for the position he holds. He was an actor, a comedian. He won the Ukrainian Dancing with the Stars trophy. He wasn't a politician. He was simply a man who was fed up with correct poli corrupt politics and offered himself to try and fix the problem. Now he is fighting for the life of his country and the lives of his fellow Ukrainians. He has the respect and admiration of the world. Along with the atrocities, there have been many wonderful things happening as Putin wages wars against the Ukraine, things that do not involve world leaders. These things have come from the common citizens of the world. I watched on the news as Ukrainian people fed and gave water to a young captured Russian soldier and helped him to phone home to his mother to let her know that he was okay. He had been part of the invading forces and yet the people he was invading took compassionate care of him in a way that would make Jesus weep for joy. I saw a couple from Denmark who drove all the way to Poland to find refugees to take back home to their house to care and minister for. They were just two of so many who out of compassion came to care for those in need. I saw baby buggies left by Polish mothers at train and bus stations for the mothers of Ukrainian babies who had to leave their buggies behind. 
I saw people all around the world protesting in the streets of their cities, sending a message to Putin to stop his invasion of the Ukraine. I saw thousands of Russian citizens protesting in their own cities, begging their government to stop the invasion. These people have my utmost respect and awe. The rest of us around the world can protest with no fear of reprisal, but the Russian protesters do so knowing that they will most likely be imprisoned, tortured, killed, or will disappear. These people have been called to action. They have stepped up and accepted their call. What has Jesus called us to do? What has he called you to do? What has he called me to do? I ask you to prayerfully listen to the voice of God within you and act upon it. Amen. And our hymn will be from More Voices, number 161, I Have Called You By Your Name. benediction will be uh, from the hymn 171 in more voices Christ has no body now but yours but rather than sing it we will speak it responsively well I guess you can't because you don't have the words so but in church on Sunday we'll be doing this responsively Christ has no body now but yours no hands but yours. Here on earth, yours is the work to serve with joy of compassion. No hands but yours to heal the wounded world. No hands but yours to soothe all the suffering. No touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God. No eyes but yours to see as Christ would see, to find the lost, to gaze with compassion. No eyes but yours to glimpse the holy joy of the city of God. No feet but yours to journey with the poor, to walk this world with mercy and justice. Yours are the steps to build a lasting peace for the children of God. Through every gift, give back to those in need. As Christ blessed, so now be his blessing. With every gift, a benediction to be the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours. Here on earth, yours is the work to serve with joy of compassion. Amen.
And our final hymn will be Voices United, number 649, Walk With Me.